So in this video, we're going to be answering a very important question, uh, which is how to actually keep um, our coffee as warm as possible. Uh, and basically, where do we lose all of the heat to our coffee when we make it the way that I usually do, which is with cream? Okay, um, let's go ahead and go uh, look at the physics behind this. So uh, what happens basically when we make a cup of coffee? Well, we start with um, a, a mug um, full of coffee. And, I mean, sorry, an empty mug. And then we add a bunch of hot coffee. And uh, 90 degrees Celsius is a pretty standard um, amount of coffee that, um, that, that, uh, that, you know, temperature of coffee that you can have. Um, and then in my case, I like to add a little bit of cream, uh, which of course, uh, normally I, I don't take the time to warm it up um, or anything like this. And so um, it's normally at a refrigerator temperature, it's about five degrees Celsius. Um, and so the big question is, uh, well, what happens after that? Well, of course, we know that heat energy starts basically moving um, from the 90 degree coffee into the five degree uh, cream. Um, and it basically keeps adding thermal energy, adding thermal energy, this heat energy basically that's moving from the, uh, the, the 90 degrees over the five degrees. And it'll keep doing that until basically both parts are at the same temperature. Now I know this seems a little weird because of course in real life what happens is the, the, the liquid actually all mixes together, et cetera, et cetera. We actually don't have to worry about that de those details. It turns out um, that, that thinking about each separate component as if it's kind of its own little uh, block of, um, you know, like we have this little, this little block of liquid cream, this block of liquid coffee, actually uh, gives, gives us the right answer as, as if we kind of took into account the fact that they're actually mixing together and things like this. Um, so one thing we need to ask is, well, uh, how much thermal energy does actually move, let's say, from the coffee to uh, the, the liquid, and, and what determines that physics? Um, well, it turns out that uh, this is just, it goes back to a conservation of energy. What we find is that the amount of energy uh, that goes, let's say, that, that comes out of the coffee is exactly equal to the amount of energy that goes into the cream. Um, or the, uh, the, the w other way to say that in, in an equation is that the change in energy of the cream plus the change of energy of the coffee is equal to zero. Uh, the other way to think about that is that the energy of the cream is equal to minus, uh, the change in energy of the cream is equal to minus the change in energy of the coffee. Um, and so basically the, all the energy that, that leaves the coffee will go directly into the cream. So now we just need to know an expression for basically change in thermal energy and it turns out the way we do that is with something called specific heats. Specific, specific heat is just something that you look up for the material that you're interested in. Um, and basically you just have different um, specific heats for each, uh, for each um, different element. And when you have that, you find that um, the, the, if you just take the mass of the thing you have, let's say cream in this case, multiply it times the specific heat of the cream, um, which again is just some number that you look up and you multiply it by the change in temperature of the cream, um, that basically gives you the change in the thermal energy, okay? Um, basically, this, this has units of, uh, you know, joules per kilogram uh, degree Celsius, basically, so that um, when it all multiplies out, this, this whole expression basically have unit, has units of joules or units of energy. Um, and you have the same expression basically for the coffee. The only thing that's different, of course, is that you have different masses of coffee versus the mass of cream in this case, and um, they may have specific heats, although to be honest, for this problem, I think we'll just treat the specific heats of both coffee and cream as uh, the specific heat of water, which, which isn't quite right. Um, the cream has a little bit of fat in it that would change its specific heat, but it's good enough for now. Um, and you'll notice um, that uh, how these, the, the, this equation up here works out. Um, if you think about it, the final temperature for the coffee is going to be lower than 90 degrees, right? So the final temperature is going to be um, lower than 90 degrees. And so this TF minus T initial will actually give us a negative number. Um, whereas in this case, the final temperature is going to be higher than the five degrees. And so TF minus TI is going to be a positive number. And that's how we're going to get these to equal zero right here. Um, so that's just kind of the general idea of how we're going to do this. Let's go ahead and go to the whiteboard um, and we'll, we'll actually see how this works out in practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, what we're going to do here. Um, you notice, again, we're just going to take this delta E cream plus delta E coffee equal to zero. Basically, just use the fact that we have this energy conservation to solve this problem. Um, and so we just get the um, M of the cream. Uh, so we just need to find out what the M of the cream is. 
Um, I actually measured that. The, ma the mass of the cream that I add is about five grams um, whenever I actually uh, measure what I actually add into my coffee. Um, we also need the mass of the coffee, of course. Um, the mass of the coffee uh, is about 250 grams um, whenever I measure it, at least the stuff that I had. Um, and so that will give us all the stuff we need, except the last thing we need is the, the specific heat of the coffee and the cream. All right, that's the C in this equation. Um, the specific heat of the coffee and the cream, we're just going to say is just equal to uh, the specific heat of water. All right, um, it's, it's a pretty good assumption. Um, cream uh, isn't quite the same. Uh, and that's going to be 4,186 joules per kilogram. All right, um, and so we'll just use that for both the cream and the coffee. Um, and that's that should work out. That should give us a pretty good idea of basically um, what uh, what's going to happen whenever we do this. All right, so we can go ahead and just set up our equation. Um, so we get the mass of the cream, uh, C of the cream, temperature final minus temperature initial. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just move uh, the the um, so you know the, that's the, just this equation moved over here. I'm going to go ahead and move the all the coffee stuff over to the right side of the equation. And then so just um, equal to minus at mass of the coffee times C of the coffee uh, times the temperature finest, final minus temperature initial of the coffee. All right. Um, so now we can just start plugging things in uh, and figure out what's happening. So again, the mass of the cream, we're going to want to turn, turn this into kilograms because, uh, again, that specific heat is actually in kilograms, joules per kilogram degree C. Um, so... It's 4186 again, joules per kilogram degree C, so we need to do that. We can actually use degree C because uh, the temperature is just finding the temperature difference, so we don't have to do Kelvin uh, because we're subtracting them one from the other. It turns out we just need degree C. So we take temperature final, that's what we're trying to find, um, and then we just subtract the initial temperature, which in the case of the cream is just this 5 degrees C. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the coffee. Again, the coffee weighs 250 grams, um, which is 0.25 kilograms. And the specific heat of the coffee was just 4186, again, joules per kilogram degree C. And then again, we'll do the temperature final um, minus uh, the 90 degrees, which is the initial temperature of the coffee. And I want to point out that um, this temperature final here, um, that's actually the same temperature for both, uh, for, for both things. Uh, that, remember, they both come to the same temperature at the end. Um, and that's, that's why I can use TF for both equations. Okay, so from here, we're basically just doing some math. Um, I think I'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and um, divide uh, the, let, let's divide out that 0 0.005 kilograms on each side. Um, so let's divide, uh, oh, first actually, let's, let's cross out the, um, the specific heats. In this case, specific heats actually cancel out. They don't, they don't normally, um, but, but in this case they do because there's one on each side. Um, and so, uh, uh, again, let's um, uh, let's actually. Uh, sorry about that. Um, let's let's not do that. Let, let's go ahead and cancel out the 0 0.005 kilograms on each side. So we'll divide the left side by 0 0.005 kilograms. Um, that way, we just get uh, the temperature final um, minus five degrees Celsius. And then on the right side, we've just divided by that 0 0.005 kilograms, and so we get minus. And then 0.25 divided by 0 0.005 is 50. All right, and then we get that all multiplied by temperature final minus 90 degrees Celsius. Now from here, we can just multiply out uh, the right side. So minus 50 TF and uh, minus 50 times minus 90. Um, uh, and that should be 4,500 degrees Celsius. And then we just carry over the, the left side. Um, and now, so then we just get 51 by adding the 50 on the left side. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I messed up that 5, so I just write that better. And then, oh, oh actually, the, the right side, that 4,500 should be positive uh, because we had a minus times a minus. So it's positive 4,500, and then we get the 5 degrees from the left side. So then when we finally solve this all out, we get a temperature final equal to... Um, it's 88 degrees Celsius uh, when we finally get this. Um, so it actually doesn't change that much. Um, it's actually pretty similar to, uh, to what we started out with. The coffee didn't cool down that much. Uh, but that isn't exactly what you notice. A lot of times you actually find that whenever you add everything, 
um, the coffee does actually uh, cool down quite a bit. Um, part of the reason is that we've actually missed something. So it turns out the cream isn't changing things that much. Uh, but um, we totally missed uh, the fact that we're pouring it um, uh, that, that, that we're pouring it into a cold mug. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and look at that for a second. And then we'll go ahead and try to resolve it using the fact that we have a, that we're pouring this into a cold mug. So again, the interesting thing is now we actually have a, a whole different situation where now we still have the cream that's at 5 degrees C. We still have the coffee that's at 90 degrees C. Now we have a 25 degree mug. And so the change in energy of the cream plus change in energy of the coffee plus the change of energy in the mug all equals zero. So now we're going to have to deal with three things at the same time, which are all going to come to the same temperature at the end. Again, everything is basically going to be right there at the same temperature at the end. So let's see how we solve that. All right, so this is going to be basically the most complicated or the best complicated we can get with these problems. So in this case, we have three things. We have basically the change in energy of the, the, um, the, the, the mug. All right. Um, we have the change in energy of the cream. And change in energy of the coffee. And that's all equal to zero. Here's the crazy thing about this. We actually don't know. Um, we know that the cream is going to heat up. We know the coffee is going to cool down. We actually don't know what the mug is going to do. I'm guessing the mug is going to heat up, um, but um, but we're actually not entirely sure what's going to happen. So we're just going to kind of have to go along and see what happens. Um, again, the um, we just do uh, the the. Um, So, um, so again, this 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 isn't any inherently harder than the the other one. We're just going to kind of have to deal with more terms. So we get the m, the mass of the mug, the c of the mug, um, the you know the t final minus t initial of the mug plus mass of the cream. Uh, C of the cream, T final minus T initial of the cream, and uh, mass of the coffee, um, C of the coffee, T final minus T initial of the coffee. All right, now let's just plug everything in. A um, couple of extra things that I that you need to know. Mass of the mug, again, I measured, um, is 300, 300 grams. And the specific heat of ceramic is actually, I, I had a hard time finding it, but um, in looking at some things like granite and glass and stuff like that, I think it's, it's pretty safe to say um, that the specific heat uh, of, um, uh, of those, um, uh, um, let's see, is um, about uh, 700, or about 800, oops, 800 um, joules per kilogram degree C. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in all of our numbers and work things out. Um, we got 300, uh, 0 0.300 kilograms. We got the um, density uh, C of the mug, uh, which is 800. We got T final, and we were starting the mug out at 25 degrees C. It's basically just sitting there at room temperature. We then add the mass of the cream, which is five. Uh, sorry, which is 0 0.005 kilograms. See the cream, we're still using 4186 um, joules per kilogram degree C. Um, we're still trying to find T final, and we're going to subtract um, the T initial, which in this case uh, is, um, uh, is our, uh, our um, 5 degrees C. And then we have to add the coffee. So um, that's the coffee again was 200, uh, 0.250 kilograms. Um, see the coffee again was 4186 joules per kilogram degree C. And again, we have temperature final minus the initial temperature 
uh, which in this case, 90 degrees C. And that's all equal to zero. Okay, that's a long equation, sorry about that. Um, all right, uh, so um, one thing to note is that all these temperature finals are all the same, right? They're, it's all gonna come to the same temperature at the end, basically. We're just treating it as an isolated system. Everything has to be at equilibrium. It has to all be at the same temperature. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead uh, and um, it doesn't really, there's no really nice way to do this. Um, but uh, I'm going to divide um, uh, both sides. Uh, I'm going to divide everything by um, this whole thing by uh, 0 0.005 and 4186, um, like I did last time. Uh, so uh, basically, I'll make some of this math a little easier. The first one isn't going to be any easier at all, so we're going to take 0 0.3 times 800. Uh, divided by 0 0.005 divided by 4186. Um, so if we divide that whole, if we take the first term, we just get 11.47 temperature final. <coughs> Excuse me. Minus 25 degrees C. Um, of course, this one just and it ends up dividing out, so we just get T final. Minus five degrees C, and then uh, this one um, gives us that fifty again. So fifty times temperature final minus um, minus ninety degrees C. And that's all it goes zero. Let's multiply some things out. So we get eleven point four seven TF. Um, let's multiply that number times twenty five, um, and we get uh, minus uh, two. Eight seven degrees C um, plus TF minus five degrees C plus um, fifty TF minus um, that's that. Oh, sorry, forty five hundred degrees C. And that's all equal to zero. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, do some more math. Um, uh, so we can add five, we can add 4,500. We'll basically put all of our constants. So put this and this and this together. If you add all those together, you get um, 4,792. And that's still minus. And then if we add 50 TF plus TF, that gives us 51 TF uh, plus 11.47. So 51 plus 11. Uh, gives us 62, so we get 62.5 approximately TF. Fix the 62.5, so 62.47 TF if you prefer. So then we're just, we'll just do 62.5 TF is equal to 4792. And then we just divide by 62.5. Um, uh, sorry, uh, we divide 47. 9.2 by 62.5 and we get that the temperature final is 77 degrees Celsius. All right, so that's significantly cooled it down. Um, that's that's really um, that's really not not too fun at all. Um, uh, in fact, um, so we've cooled it down from you know like just below um, boiling to like uh, 185 degrees Fahrenheit, which you know. It sounds sounds uh, hot, but um, that's quite a bit cooler than we started out with when we figured we start out with that 90 degrees Celsius. And that's why you should pre-warm your mugs uh, by basically putting some hot water in them before uh, you pour your coffee in. Um, anyway, I hope that gives you an idea about how to solve these. Again, um, it shouldn't matter. I should be able to give you, although I won't, um, but I should be able to give you, you know, 300 different things uh, that are all mixing together. You just add another term and just solve for your T final when you're trying to find this. Nothing's really changing. And again, all it's doing is just looking at the energy conservation, basically the fact that energy is being moved from one to another. In this case, all the energy of the coffee uh, moved into the mug and, and moved into the cream to heat both the cream and the coffee uh, and the mug up um, until it reached this final temperature of 77 degrees C. Hope that was useful. Um, hope you liked that and, uh, and we'll do some more of it in class.